Is Africa truly rising? The 2014 Africa Prosperity Report addresses the question by providing a broad overview of the performance of African nations. Tony Alemelu, chairman of Hares Holdings and founder of the Tony Alemelu Foundation, endorses the report, saying that National prosperity goes beyond quantitative measures like economic growth. We welcome the introduction of the Prosperity Index as a measure of human progress and the real wealth of nations. The report ranks 38 African countries. Botswana tops the rankings, while the Central African Republic is ranked lowest. Countries in Central Africa tend to rank at the bottom. Western and Eastern African countries, on the other hand, tend to rank in the middle, with Nigeria, for example, coming in 27th, and Kenya, 13th. Rwanda has improved the most year on year in terms of prosperity. The country has risen five places since 2012 and is now ranked eighth. Malawi has fallen 11 places since 2012 and now ranks 20th in overall prosperity. This has partly been driven by a fall of 18 places in its economy sub-index and a drop of 20 places in its social capital sub-index. On average, prosperity in Africa has been rising since 2012. Every country in Africa has risen in at least one sub-index since 2012. This increase in prosperity has been driven mainly by improvements in the economy and entrepreneurship and opportunity. African countries score badly in health, but have improved in the past years. The most worrying message is in safety and security, where African countries perform badly and the situation has worsened in the past years. Given its multidimensional nature and its rankings based on both wealth and well-being, this report provides a comprehensive view of the current situation in Africa and investigates the potential of future prosperity in the continent. As African economies grow, many governments will wish to ensure that the fruits of growth benefit a majority of the population and contribute to true long-term prosperity. This report examines in detail three distinct groups who are often identified as drivers of African prosperity. They are the well-educated, female entrepreneurs, and the middle class. Education enables people to contribute economically and politically. Educated people also report high levels of personal well-being. Enrollment rates in Africa are higher in primary than secondary and tertiary education. In our case study in Tanzania, they are also higher in urban areas and for people from richer backgrounds. Increasing and harmonizing enrollment rates across the entire population is an important goal, but the quality of education is important too. Satisfaction with education is generally low in Africa, though countries differ widely in terms of levels of satisfaction. Improving the basic education system and providing the right set of employable skills remain the biggest challenges for Tanzania and many other African nations. Introducing e-learning and giving more space to indigenous knowledge in the traditional curricula and teaching methods can improve education quality and the relevance of their curriculum. Women continue to be an underused resource in many of the continent's economies, as shown by the percentage of women who own a business. This needs to be addressed in order to release female human capital that could revolutionize the African labor market and the wider business environment. As women tend to invest more in their families and communities, such a shift would also lead to poverty reduction, increased prosperity and well-being. Women in Africa often lack access to finance, social networks and property rights. They also receive little government support for childcare. These factors influence a woman's ability to start a business. Some governments, however, have taken steps to promote gender equality. Rwanda offers a best practice example. The inclusion of women in governance has helped to enact many reforms to improve the business environment, which ultimately have benefited women entrepreneurs. For example, women hold 64% of parliamentary seats. Egypt is a less promising case. Indeed, the country's business environment has worsened in the aftermath of the Arab Spring. The gender gap in business ownership increased by 11% since 2010, and the female perception of corruption in business has increased by 12%. Today, about one-third of Africans have per capita daily consumption expenditure levels of between $2 and $20 in purchasing power parity terms. This qualifies them as middle class, according to the African Development Bank. However, a large share of the African population remains locked in the poverty trap. 
This is of concern, as traditionally, the middle class demand from their governments greater accountability and transparency, better education, and a more business-friendly environment. The report shows that the middle class enjoys better education, better houses, better access to media, and more stable jobs. It also has well-defined consumption patterns. Moreover, the middle class is generally more satisfied with their living standards, freedom of choice, and education. It has more confidence in the government and a more optimistic view of the job and business environment. Retail and fast food chains are scrambling for African consumers. This is especially true of Nigeria, one of our case studies, where citizens are also engaged socially and politically. Supporting and promoting better educated people, female entrepreneurship, and a stable and rising middle class is a way of empowering women, the young and the poor. Unlocking this great human capital potential will lead to more prosperous countries where the majority of the population benefits from Africa's economic growth.